Hi, hello, it's Pip here from queenpipcards.com. I uh, just wanted to jump on and start today's brand new basics class. So this is a series where I'm showing you things that are um, useful to people who just started crafting, just started crafting with me, or just started um, card making and using stamping up products. So I'm still kind of finding my feet with this. So I haven't, again... Uh, told you that I'm coming on exactly what time etc I'm hoping that a few people might be able to pop on and uh, and see me oh hi I think Barry's joined us um, nice to see you there Barry so today we're talking tools and stuff because I promised that last week I would do that so the first thing I wanted to start off with was the basic things that I normally um, would recommend a new crafter to have so we're going to start off with one of these okay i'll turn it around that way is stamping up the right way stamping up the right way there we go so <laughs> this is oh hi Ginny. Hi, oh thanks for the hearts love the love um so this is a bone folder okay and what this does is it helps you to fold paper i mean it says folder and that's what it does uh, I didn't have this piece of card to hand, which is what I should have done. So normally when you make a card, you would want to have a nice creased edge. So your bone folder helps you do that. So you could just do this and you could just squish it down with your fingers. But if you do it with a bone folder, you get a much more professional edge. It's much crisper. It's sharper, less likely to crack any paper. Although I must say our cardstock very rarely cracks. Um, and yeah, that's that is pretty much it. That is what you use a bone folder for. OK, I, I like it because it gives you that professional view. It gives you that professional look to your card making. And I think that's what we're all after at the end of the day. So that's just a basic thing that I would always have in my toolbox. The other thing I would always have in my toolbox is a good pair of scissors or as we call them in stamping up terms, paper snips. So they come with a protective case or cover, which only fits one way on your snips, just in case you were wondering. There's a smaller um, metal rivet there and a large one there, and you need the large one clicks into that hole so that they can't come off when you're traveling, which I like. And these are, well, the best scissors I've ever had. You can hear how sharp they are and they literally get right into every every edge and every corner so scissors well what can i say about scissors you use them to cut things out you use them to um obviously cut ribbon cut cardstock cut paper um you can cut anything with them really but i use them mainly for my uh, cutting out or what we call fussy cutting which is cutting around a design or for cutting ribbon and cardstock and all that kind of stuff, twine, etc. So yes, a good pair of scissors is always necessary. Then we move on to things that you might not think about. Okay, so I'm now looking at this, which is the uh, called your take your pick tool. It comes with lots of different ends. It actually has another end. I wonder where I've put that. Here it is. So it comes with this interchangeable end here. So you turn it, you open it, and then there you have your pokey tool, as I call it, um, which is your sharp, really sharp edged pointy thing. Um, and that's great and useful for paper piercing or any of the other techniques where you might want to use a sharp implement for. And then you just put it back in, twist, and now it's locked. It's in there sturdy. Twist and pull. And this end is the spatula end. And that is the end that I tend to keep on all the time. The reason being is I found that it works perfectly for picking up embellishments. And, um, you know, if you've got your um, sticky rhinestones or uh, sequins or any kind of stuff stuck in the wrong place, this will get it off for you very gently without marking your cardstock. And you can pick it up and replace it. So I love that. However, you can also use it for other things, mixing embossing paste or shimmery embossing paste. Um, flicking stuff on you know it's 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 just a versatile tool really 
It also comes with this end, which you can put in. And this is an interchangeable end, which matches what we have in our scoreboard. So it's a, a thin end and a thick end. And this you use for scoring paper. OK, now, obviously, I normally use mine with my scoreboard and I wouldn't say a scoreboard is an essential item. OK, uh, but it's the same tool as it comes in the bottom of the scoreboard. A scoreboard is a useful item, but it's not something that I would include in my current in, in, in my basics toolkit. So but this is always handy to have because you can always score manually if you need to without a board. So it also comes with this end which is um, always comes out with a bit of a pop because it's a vacuum end um, and this is where your putty comes in can you see that I don't know if you can see that I can look close here can you see that is it going to re oops refocus on my fingers oh not quite is it refocused on there we go just about it's trying <laughs> I've got a new I've got a new camera can you tell I'm not quite used to I'm not quite used to how it works yet I think actually it's because I haven't got it on macro so it's going to focus a bit better down there so this um, this putty end here is uh, useful for picking up little tiny things like sequins okay because it's sticky but it's not permanent sticky it's just light sticky and so it means you can pick up sequins if you scatter things across um, your desk which sometimes I do um, Let's find some. And these are some I've just got in here in my pot. So, oh, look, see, I've dropped one. There we go. Pick it up. There's a black piece of thing. Can you see that? Pick it up. There we go. Pop it down. Just hold it and it comes off. So pick up, put down. So it's like a picky uppy stick, as I used to call my picky uppy sticks. Um, but it's on a it's it's with a lid so you can just close the lid you can unscrew it when it becomes dried or covered in fluff at the end which sometimes they do you just pull the end off twist it and some more comes out and when you actually get your tool you it comes with a spare so you have a spare um, set of putty and you can buy these separately okay so that's that should take your pick tool so i think that's useful lots of people just cope with having this tool the pokey tool but i just like the fact that it comes all together and um, gives you a, a more versatile look now oh has sandra joined us oh hi sandra sandra's joined joined us hello um so i'm just going through the basics sandra this is my brand new basics tools kit so yeah, so I like it all together. I have lost the lid. It's supposed to come with a lid, but I lost that at retreat. So it has another plastic lid like this that covers this end. Okay, so that's your take your pick tool. Next up, let's talk adhesives. So we always need things to stick things down with. Okay, uh, this is my little selection of what I would call your essentials. So you always need a wet glue, and this is our multi-purpose glue multi-purpose adhesive glue it does come out quite quickly out of the end here so you just need to be um oh hi angela angela's on hello nice to see you hope you're feeling better honey um it does come out quite quickly but once you get used to the tension of it it's just you have to be quite gentle with it until um the glue's not coming out because you've been standing it on your desk like that when you've been standing on your desk like that when you turn it back over then you need to give it a good shake and that will just bring the glue down to the end again so yeah that's and then people get frustrated they think the glue's finished or they say oh there's nothing left in here and can't get it out then they get frustrated they squeeze it too hard and then you get a very sticky mess so um or if you leave it and it's somewhere hot that can also make it expand out the top of the nozzle and it'll just keep on going but for all of its faults and there are some i just love it i think it's the best thing so I use this more than anything else. So that is your multi-purpose glue. And you would use this to stick uh, paper to card, uh, card to card, card boxes, um, anything that you need permanent adhesion. OK, I also use it to stick card to ribbon, but only after the ribbon has already been placed down. And that's what I use this for. This is our snail because it looks like a snail a little bit. 
and it leaves a sticky trail okay so you open it it's got this little bit on it which stops you getting glue all over your bag which i love so you pop that open and then you just wind this on and the glue comes out so you just literally use it like this so if i have a piece of scrap card here we go in fact you're going to be seeing me using this later but i'll just demonstrate see it comes out like that and you can see it leaves a shiny trail okay so that's why it's called snail because it leaves a trail um but yes so that's sticky and um, it's great for holding ribbon uh, you can use it to adhere cardstock to cardstock as well i generally use this because it gives a stronger hold the only thing warning i would give you on this um, from a snail perspective is if you stick stuff over a radiator or put them in a hot place it can dry this out completely and then your topper falls off so i would not recommend putting things in a hot place uh, and also for a box it's not strong enough to hold boxes together okay so anything with kind of tension i wouldn't i wouldn't use it for and then finally we've got stamping dimensionals these are a patented um, design they are um, they have a trademark associated with them and they are um, foam pads that you use to or, oh, I should have opened that earlier but I wanted to show you it in the in the packet because you get three sheets in a packet uh, oh hi Nikki Nikki's on nice to see you Oh, I meant to send you a message, Nikki. Did you notice that the calendar is on a special offer? You know, the new big, you know, the big planner that you like? That's on special offer at the moment on the year-end clearance. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, but yes, so I don't think you can see those. But if I take one off, you will be able to. So they are hexagonal in shape. They're not round and they're not square. They're hexagonal, which means they fit perfectly for circles or squares and they're sticky on this side and then when you put it down on your card you take the top off and then they're sticky on the top as well okay so they're double-sided sticky you don't have to glue them and they are great for adding as they're called dimension because they're dimensionals so they just add a bit of dimension so that's what they are you can get them in two different sizes these days so you can get them in the um the normal size and you can get them in these tiny weeny mini ones oops see the little tiny mini ones in comparison to the normal size ones they really are tiny <laughs> so yeah so they're great for um yeah they're great for for when you've got small pieces of card that you might want to stick down okay so that's uh dimensionals actually i'm going to leave that here because i'm going to use some of those later uh, so that's what have we done we've done a, adhesives we've done bone folder snips and pick up tool then of course the other thing you're going to need is blocks now I have what I would call my go-to selection here however I don't think that you need this if you saw my video last week you'll know that I recommend you look at what you're going to be purchasing and work out what blocks you need for that purpose okay so i think last week i just used this block and they worked great um but sometimes it is good to have the right size block for your um size of stamps that you're using so if you're using a really tiny stamp it is very good practice to put it on the right size block and the reason for that is it it's it aids in stamping it stops you rocking and getting ink on the outside of the blocks when you're stamping and it makes it more comfortable for you to feel and look through and um, it just makes it easier for you to understand placement and of things i'm trying to stop this all getting too bright oh it's really doing lots of focusing i must sort that out autofocus needs to not be my friend maybe i don't know um <laughs> anyway so yes yeah, so that's that's um blocks they come in a variety of sizes these are the main sizes it starts off with a which is this really tiny one then we go to b uh, c d e is a bigger one f is a bigger one still then it goes g and h so g and h are the two long ones like this okay okay every, is it making sense to everyone so far give me a thumbs up or a happy or a something uh, if it's making sense to you so far 
and you're safe to do so you're not listening to me while you're driving um, although if you're listening to me i hope you're not watching me while you're driving so so yes yeah, so these these are the generally the blocks that i use almost all the time i probably use that one a little less than i use the others okay uh, which was the b block but it is useful for certain sizes so we'll be using these a little bit later so you can see what they're all used for thank you i've got lots of likes coming in <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> that's appreciated okay so now i'm going to move on to just one other thing that i that two two things that i think are kind of essential although one i technically you might think of as a special rather than a essential but i'm going to talk to you about my wink of stella okay wink of stella is this is the clear wink of stella and it's a brush and basically this is sparkles in a brush okay and whilst you might say well pip is that really essential and i might say well no maybe not the fact that you can add sparkly shiny shimmery things on a card just by brushing over it i think for a card maker is fairly essential especially at christmas so um but also i use it a lot for watercoloring without actually water yeah, angela likes this one <laughs> thanks Ange. i love my wink of stella i use it all the time so for me this is what i count as a basic craft re re tool requirement and um all the guys that come to class generally end up getting one of these because they agree so then i'm going to say the next one is what you need if you are crafting on your own at home so if you're coming to my classes and you just come into class and you're not making any cards at home then no you might not need one of these okay but if you are crafting at home this is essential <laughs> yeah who was that was that Ginny <laughs> it might have been Ginny um my trimmer I love 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 my trimmer my trimmer is great the reason I like my trimmer so much the thing that sold it to me the first time is that you can cut a piece of acre for paper in half or into the right size for a card base without having to get your side arm out okay they come with a side arm so you can go up to 12 by 12 but you don't need it to cut a card base and this just saves so much time when you're crafting i know it sounds silly it's just a piece of cardstock and you're just cutting it in half but honestly it does it really does save you a lot of time um I like it because it comes with a scoring blade as well so you have a scorer and a cutter so the light gray is a scorer and the dark gray is a cutter it is a um it's not a rotary it's just a cutter just a, an actual blade that goes along you have a lock at the top here oh it doesn't like me so you can lock you can lock this guard in place or you can unlock it and you can open the guard and that's useful for when you want to come and change your blade and then you have your track in here which is also replaceable um, and when it gets dirty my recommendation is that you give it a good clean and then you put it back in and it makes your crafting experience and cutting experience better again my mine needs a good clean but i'm going to work out how my focus is working before i do that i will do another one on cleaning because cleaning is really important otherwise you end up with loads of gunky messes everywhere but um, it has both inches and centimeters measurement for us here in Europe which I love and on the base it has a nice little um, compartment into which you can store things when you're traveling so I've got a piece of washi tape stuck to the bottom of that so into here for example you could um, I don't know if that will fit actually yeah that'll fit just about fit for your tools certainly fits your bone folder in one of them was it, was it that one or that one i can't remember i thought one of them oh maybe they've added another slot oh, i thought my bone folder used to fit in there well yeah just about there we go bone folder um but more importantly you can add spare blades and things like that in the bottom so that's always handy uh and as you can see it has feet with these um rubbery things on and then this is the arm that comes out and you unclip lock this piece into place and then when you turn that over it gives you a nice solid arm to work on and that means you can measure up to 
14 inches, which is about 36 centimetres, just over 36 centimetres. OK, so that's my trimmer. Now, the final thing that you need, OK, and I know you're thinking, good Lord, this is a lot of stuff, but it isn't really. Um, but the final thing you need is something to dry, um, clean your stamps with. So you can either go with this, which is a Simply Chamois, which is um, a cheaper alternative to my favourite of favourites, which is my stamping scrub. So I'm going to start with my scrub for a second and then come back to the chamois. So the scrub is a hard cased opening um, mechanism like this. And what this has in it is two sides. Uh, this one's got little raindrops on. Oh, I'm getting very bright. I don't know why. Why is that going so bright? I don't know. Sensible. Maybe because it's black. I'm not sure. Anyway, this has two. Has some raindrops on it. This has a sun on it. Oh, that's better. Uh, so this is your wet side. This is your dry side. And you literally wash and dry. And then that's it. You're off and running. Okay. So that's... Um, that's the scrub and it cleans your stamps beautifully but if you if that's too big for you or um, you don't want to invest that much straight away then you can get one of these and this is a simply chamois now it comes would you believe it in this beautiful um, highland heather purple color but as you can see mine's been used quite a lot <laughs> and so um, yeah gets a little mucky <laughs> But it doesn't come off on your hands. I would you just need to wet it um, to get it into this pliable state. You can see here at the corners it's drying out. Um, it's slowly starting to dry. And then it it goes hard when it's dry and soft when it's wet or damp. Uh, when it's damp is when you would use it because that is when it can take the, the ink uh, off of a stamp and yes it will stain as mine has but do you know what it doesn't matter it doesn't affect it in any way so i would recommend leaving it to dry before storing it in any kind of plastic box though because otherwise it can go moldy and start to smell and we don't want that okay so now you're thinking well that's all very well and good pip but you know um i've seen all that stuff but it hasn't actually helped me make anything yet or craft anything yet and that's very true so now we're going to make a card so i've realized that my webcam is now upside down so i'm you're seeing everything back to front to me so we'll just go with it and you'll have to have to bear with me okay um next time i'll work out how to turn it around <laughs> and then and then it'll go the other way so it'll be fine um okay so we've shown you how to do the card base with the bone folder, okay, to give you a nice, nice crisp image, crisp fold straight down the side there. Then I've pre-cut a piece of cardstock. This is this is Mango Melody and this is Cajun Craze. And yes, all our colours have um, all our ink colours have names that make you want to eat something, um, so or or just spring to mind lovely places and evocative names so Cajun Craze and Mango Melody uh, that's this lovely terracotta and I'm going to be using this stamp set called Country called Country Home there we go <laughs> I'll turn it upside down for you um, I haven't actually bought this stamp set oh, shock horror uh, but I borrowed it from one of my team who's heading off to the uh, South Atlantic South Pacific no She's in. She's going to Antarctica, so she's heading off South America somewhere at the moment. So, um, so yes, yeah, so she can't be with uh, around over Christmas, and so she very kindly said I could borrow her stamp set to play with, which is great. Um, Ginny says these are great suggestions. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Ginny. Glad you like them. That's uh, that's very good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show people some stuff. So, and then I thought we'd be playing with some. Uh, cardstock so I've got some uh, very vanilla cardstock here no I haven't got why have I got very vanilla cardstock here no we'll go very vanilla and I've got some more mango melody and I've also got a sheet of this paper which is actually a Christmas paper that's probably why I've got vanilla because it's vanilla on this side it's got a uh, season of cheer tidings of comfort and joy which you can't see because it's upside down peace on earth la 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 all that kind of stuff which is great it's from the farmhouse um set but actually on the other side is what i want to use oh sorry about that <laughs> 
Isn't it always the way that the door bell rings just when you don't want it to? Right, but my customers love the fact that their orders are coming in. Okay, so this is the, as I was saying, it's granite gray. So we've got granite gray ink to match this. And then we've got mango melody ink and Cajun craze ink. And I thought these three would go really nicely with the country home. So I haven't actually designed anything yet. We're going to do it on the fly. How's that? Okay. <laughs> When I put this up on YouTube, which I will be doing all of them, I'll cut that whole gap thing out. So if you watch it back later, you won't get to see the gap. All righty. So I think I might swap that out for Whisper White. I really quite like the warmth of that. Mm. These days, people are saying that you can put white with vanilla, but it still just doesn't sit right with me. I don't know. I'm a traditional girl. I like my Whisper White with my Whisper White. So let's go with some whisper white. So I thought what I'd do is I'd show you how I work out how large a piece of cardstock I'm going to need. And it's not very, it's not very technical. It's it's really quite simple. I, I know how large a my stamp set is. Um, not my stamp set, my card base is. I want to use this milk churn. Now obviously with it, real rubber is a little harder. But with these, it's nice and easy. And then I wanted to use, which one should we use? I think I'll just use this one. Ooh. And they do, it does sound terrible when you, when it does that, but trust me, it's okay. All right. So just the two stamps. I'm going to unlock my trimmer. They do stick to that. So I'm just going to put a piece of cardstock on. Okay, so I know that I'm going to need, so I just place it down like this, roughly where it's going to go. So I know that I'm going to need quite a large piece of cardstock to fit that on. Okay, and I can actually start measuring it out. So I can start, to, I can say, if I take it from that piece there, that's down to here, that's 11 centimeters. Okay, and then from here to here, it's about about six and a half. So we'll say, let's just make sure I've got that right up there. So actually, yeah, probably 10 and a half at a push, but we're going to go with 11. OK, so I know I need a piece of Whisper White cardstock that's 10 and a half by 11. No, six and a half by 11. That's what I said, wasn't it? Six and a half by 11 to be able to fit that piece, that stamp on it okay so now i'm going to put my stamps on my block or blocks and i'm going to cut this piece of cardstock six and a half by 11 okay so i know that it's 21 wide so to make the most efficient use of your of your trimming in the in european terms our cards are something stuck under here there we go Always make sure that your trimmer is flat. Um, the card stock uh, that I'm using is European sized, obviously. So um, I just realised it's gone a little bit, a little bit dark on this side. So I'll just put that light on again. Um, so it's 21 this way. So I know I can get six and a half times three out of here because that's you know six and a half six and a half six and a half so i would always cut this at 11 and that's just the way i work it you know you'll get used to working out uh, the best way of doing uh, different card sizes but i'm just showing you how i do it so i'm going to cut one piece like this and then i'm going to cut the next one at six and a half so that was six and a half by 11. Okay. And then I want to mat this with a piece of Cajun Craze. No, not Cajun Craze, Mango Melody. There we go. And so I'm going to make my Mango, Mel Mango Melody will be 11 and a half centimetres by 7 centimetres. Okay. And that will give me a nice edge all the way around my cardstock so it looks like that okay 
Now, I want to have the Cajun craze showing behind like this, but I also want to have some of that farmhouse paper because I think it looks yummy. So you've got two options. You can either put a section like down the side here behind so it goes down this way or you can put a section across the bottom. I think I'm going to go with the vertical layout. I just think it will match with the um, stripes on the paper but I think I actually either would do. So I'm going to take my layout which is like this. I'm just going to work out roughly where I want that to be. I'm going to go pretty much edge to edge, I think. Uh, in fact, yeah, I might do it right at the edge. So I think probably something like five centimetres. So it's not quite half, but it's nearly half because our card fronts are ten and a half across. So five centimetres. And this is why I like showing stuff actually as I make it because measurements are great but when you try and translate those from UK to American it becomes very difficult and your cardstock is wider than ours so it doesn't look quite right and you know all that kind of stuff so it's better for you to understand how I'm making my design decisions and then you can decide what you want to do. Now I'm going to take this completely to the top of the Cajun craze from top to bottom so that's going to be 14 and 0.4 centimeters. Okay, so it's the top to bottom of my matte layer. So then that's going to go on there, and then that's going to go on top of there. Yay. Okay, and see, then you've got that. I might actually leave that gap. I quite like a little gap actually. Okay, and then that's going to go on there. So you can see how I'm kind of building that up. And then, once I've got that in place, then it's just a question of stamping. Now, you can stamp straight onto something like a magazine or mouse mat or something. But if you want to, you can also get one of our Stampin' Up! Pierce mats. Uh, these are great for photopolymer. You only need them for photopolymer stamps. And photopolymer stamps are, as we learned last week, the C3 stamps. Okay, so for photopolymer, you need these um, just to give that squish back, and for other stamps, you don't need them. All right, so so for our cling mount, you won't need them. So I'm going to use granite grey because that matches with the paper, this um, designer series paper, which you'll often hear people refer to as DSP. It just stands for designer series paper, which just basically means it's posh paper. <laughs> OK, <laughs> that's how I see it. Now, we need to have a big enough. You need to know roughly that that has to go in the center of this gap to fit in the churn. So you can't put the churn right over to one edge. Well, I mean, you could, but then the, the flower would be hanging off, which is also quite a nice idea, but not one I want to do just today. So I'm going to pop this right down because we know it's near the bottom. It has to be near the bottom, don't we? Because that's where it was. All right, and I'm not going to worry if it's exactly perfect, because I don't worry about things like that. I'm a rebel. And then I'm going to go Cajun Craze, because I think the majority of the stems and everything would look good in Cajun Craze. There we go. And then we're going to go straight down. And the great thing about photopolymer is, of course, you can see through. I'm trying to bring this up, but I'm also trying to get my head over whilst not getting me in the shot. So go straight down there. There we go. There you go. Doesn't that look good? Now you're going to see why I like Wink of Stella so much. Okay. Uh, and that is because... With the milk churn, we might need a bit of colouring. So I'm just going to oh, no, take this. And you need to squish. With these new ink pads, you need to squish them a little bit more. Okay, But you can squish them a little bit more and you get a bit of ink. Just dot into the centre of there. And then you shake your 
blinker Stella. You can hear that ball. That's a ball that's rattling around inside here. And then you can pick up your ink straight from there. And you can start to paint your milk churn. Okay. And I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to add some highlights to it. But you're picking up the grey, so you're adding highlights with the grey. Okay. And of course it's sparkling as well, which which is always nice. So you're getting some sparkle going. So then you could come over and have a really nice sparkly base. Sparkly edges. And it just adds an extra little bit of dimension to the card. See that? It's making it look a little bit more 3D. So you're obviously going to want to do your edges because that's where the edges, the shadows are. And you could do your handles and inside the handles. And just by doing, even if you don't do all of it, you're adding just a little sparkle to that. I don't know if you can see that. Is that showing enough sparkle? I'll try and get it so it actually focuses. Maybe not. We'll see. But um, I can assure you that there is sparkle on there. Now, I would just clean that bit of sparkle off of there because the next time I squeeze my ink pad, I don't want to get sparkle in it. Uh, but that's now clean. Just do that and it's clean again. And then I'm going to go and do the same with some Mango Melody. Go a bit of welly. There we go. I need a bit more welly than that. I never know how quite how strong to go. There we go. Uh, so this is my mango melody, and for this I'm going to use it obviously to paint some of the flowers. So then that's going to make the flowers look really sparkly. Okay. I don't know if these are all flowers. I think some are and some aren't, but they are now. They're all flowers now. Um, and you'll see that also because this is a um, this is going on to Cajun Craze, which is also a water-based ink. You will start to pick up some of the Cajun Craze. So just beware the fact that you will have a bit of colour lift coming in. But, you know, that's okay. I can cope with that. It kind of adds an orangey tone to my lovely Mango Melody. Bit of a deeper orange. There we go. So what else shall I do? Which other bits should I add? What do we think? Uh, maybe under here, some of these. I don't know what these are, but they can be flowery. Uh, those look like they're leafy. Oh, that's one of those. I've missed that because I'm trying to do it upside down. Uh, let's just add a few to this. There we go. There we go, that'll do. And you can go on and you could obviously, you could get a green out and you could add green uh, to everything. But I just wanted to add a little bit of that. And then if I wanted to go over and make these a little bit more Cajun craze, just by going over with my Wink of Stella, makes them a little bit more Cajun craze because it's just got enough liquid in it to pick up the Cajun craze ink. There you go. So what do you think of that? All right. Looks okay, doesn't it, I think? Anybody still watching me? Give me a thumbs up. If you're still there, I'll have a thumbs up. <laughs> right, so now we're going to go back and use all the tools that we used before. So we've used our stamps and we've used a thing. I'm going to use my scrub. Sorry, my chamois. Just clean that off. There we go. Now this one, it will make it will stain it red. So I'm sorry. I apologise, it's gone pink. But I don't think you're going to mind. You quite like pink. There we go. So that's clean. It looks pink, but it all—that's just the ink that it makes it go like that, stains it a little bit. 
Okay, so those are the blocks that we've used. We've used our trimmers to cut all this up. We've used our bone folder to put it to, to get a nice crease in it. So now guess what we're going to use? We're going to use the glues and we're going to stick it all together. Okay, so little piece, little bit of multi-purpose glue. Corner, corner, corner. And then join it up in the middle like I've shown you before in other videos, but not on my basics. So that's how I do my glue. So what do you think? Are these basics good? I know I've got a lot of people on here who are demonstrators, but these brand new basics videos are are for people who are new to card making, new to stamping. And I have lots of customers who are new to stamping uh, and new to all the things that are in the Stamping Up catalogue. So this is just really to help you guys work out what I'm talking about when I do my videos and my demonstrations and to give you some idea of the things that you might like to be able to do at home and to actually give you the confidence to do those things at home. So I know there are demos who are going to say, oh, I know all that, but you know, that's that's okay. We all started at one point, but there might be some dem demos out there who don't either. So don't know all these things either. So you're more than welcome to join me too. All right. So there we go. Pop that on there edge to edge like we said this I'm going to put straight down onto the card base I like to keep things fairly simple not too overloaded with layers and height so pop this straight down on here there we go like that alrighty hoping that's straight ish my eyes sometimes let me down. Right, then I'm going to pop that just there. And for that, we will need our dimensionals. Anyone who knows me or has watched any of my videos knows that I do not agree. I'm a bit like Mary. I don't like saggy bottoms. In her case, it's soggy bottoms. In my case, it's saggy bottoms. I don't like saggy toppers. So I don't, I want to make sure that you've covered all of the main places when putting your dimensionals on because there's nothing worse than getting a card that's got a bit squished out of it okay and then again i'm just going to put this off center reckless i know but i just want it to sit about there there we go so i hope you like that we could add a few sprinkles you know there's always uh, opportunities to add sparkly bits I don't know whether I want to add I think I might add some of these frosty things and this is where you take your pick tool comes in handy so some of these small frosty elements I might just add one down there what do we think hmm. yeah Actually, I quite like it with just one. I know that sounds strange, but it is odd. So I quite like it with just one. So we're going to do that. So, and then of course, if, if I didn't want that there, I could then go back in with my take your pick tool and you can just ease yourself underneath and it just comes off, which is great. And it doesn't mark it. It's amazing. I don't know quite how they've done it, but we'll go with it. I like it and I'm going to promote it. So there we go. So there you go. That's our very simple card using all the stuff that we had today apart from our snail we didn't use snail but you could use snail if you wanted to but i just i, I do like this multi-purpose glue so we've talked snail we've talked snips and um take your pick and bone folders and we've talked about blocks and we've talked about uh, dimensionals and we've talked about um, things to take stuff off so hopefully that has given you another brand new basics of things that to do with the tools that are available and what you might need to have in your basic craft kit. If you come to a class with me, then you will need adhesives for sure, a bone folder and some snips. And one of these is always handy. Uh, I, I provide everything else, blocks and all that. So you don't need that if you come to my classes. But if you're uh, crafting at home, then you will need blocks. OK. So I think that's it. If anybody else has got any questions, uh, please pop them in the comments. I will answer them as we go through the week. And I will be downloading this video and uploading it back up onto YouTube 
so you'll be able to see it again there because it's just easier to find it up there than it is here um, although you can always nip over and find them in my videos so that's brand new basics episode two tools and stuff okay <laughs> thanks ever so much for watching take care see you again soon bye bye